It was dying much more quickly in Maryland. It was dying in Virginia, too. I mean, Virginia, in 1860, had the second highest number of free blacks of any state in the Union. Pennsylvania was third with 55,000. But the point is that in, in Virginia, there were very, there were, whereas there were as many as 55,000 free blacks, there were many more slaves than in the state of Maryland. And they were what and the free blacks were widely scattered, maybe a few hundred here or there, mm. county by county throughout that oh, huge state. Oh, oh. And there was no there was no Baltimore anywhere in the state of Virginia. So the Tidewater planters maintained a far stronger control of Virginia politics. Mm -hmm. And even though they still couldn't get the state to secede along with the original seven states, they were in position to react uh, when coerced, when, when the South would be coerced by the link, the new Lincoln administration. Yeah. And I heard it last night at the event. Some, some gentleman uh, uh, spoke up and said that the, uh, that the legislators in Maryland were all arrested in August of 1861 when they went to, to move towards secession. Well, yeah, there were a number of, of, of them who were arrested at that point in, in, in 1861. But what the gentleman seems to have forgotten, and what, well, what he had forgotten, was that the legislature had voted not to secede in April of 1861. Marylanders have to have the opinion that their state didn't have a choice, that, that, that the state legislature had a gun to their head in 1861. And that's why the lost cause indicates that uh, Maryland had a gun to their head, and therefore uh, it still has all the honor that, that, that could befall anybody to, to fight for the Confederacy if you were in Maryland. That yeah. is that is how yeah. I think the uh, the Lost Cause mythology works for Maryland. That's yeah. how it has worked for Maryland. See, the trouble was it was a failure of democracy in the in the antebellum South, which we have come over the decades to consider the epitome of, 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 of American society, there was no freedom of speech. If you spoke out against slavery and you were a Southerner, you were in trouble. You could be hanged, you could be, you could be white and do that, and, and you were in considerable trouble for that. But the point was that, that uh, the planter aristocracy in the South controlled virtually, right. they controlled the legislatures, almost, almost to, a, to a man. Uh, they, if, if it wasn't they themselves, it was their son, it was, it was their lawyer, but they controlled those, those state houses. And as a result, the interests of the, of the yeoman class and lower classes were disregarded. Uh, only a small percentage of the yeoman class ever participated, even though they owned their own farms, they virtually never participated in the market economy of the South, i.e. cotton. They just subsisted. And they were the ones that were well off in the South. 25% of the white population in the, in the South pre-war were not landowners who, who had nothing. And, they, and there, there are books on, these, on, on that class of people. They couldn't write that most of them were illiterate. They couldn't write their own story, so we don't know much about them. But they were there, and they had nothing to say. And essentially, the planter aristocracy used the yeoman class and, the, and, the, and those Absolutely. poor people as, as cannon fodder for their interest in slavery for those four years. It's a disaster. It's, it's ugly to ignore the Union soldiers. It's uglier to ignore the African That's American the gap. soldiers. That's the and it's also ugly to, to ignore the work and the, and the, and the work that, that civilians did to, to support the Union cause by feeding Baltimore by sending the, they cooperated with the Union. That's something that just has gone on to un, totally unrecognized. That's, that's what I feel is so important. Yeah. And I can I feel like I'm a, a person who I don't have any passion either side. Yeah. I'm a history guy. I feel like as, as far as the, the Civil War and my involvement and as as what I know of it, uh, I think it's really an important cog in challenging lost cause mythology. I originally said I think it should belong in a cemetery where, where cons former Confederate soldiers are buried. I think it's also a good idea to put it in a, in a museum. But on the other hand, if it has to stay there, let's be, let's be really, let's fix it. And I have a feeling also that if you really, have, and I would love, the thing that I, I want to research more 
is what was the real attitude of the Talbot boys, CSA themselves? What did they really think? Do we really know what they thought of the Civil War? Do we really think that they would have done that again? Had they had the chance to, 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 to reject it? I think the answer would have been 